Pascal, we're very excited to have you uh, on the show today uh, from, uh, and actually talk about really, we're, our episode is really about Web3 and what's happening. Our episode today is really talking about Web3 and every, all the developments going on around the topic. From your perspective, Pascal, how do you see the role of self-custody in a Web3 ecosystem? The role of self-custody is front and center. Uh, so first, you know, Bitcoin originally and cryptocurrencies have been designed to be peer-to-peer. -peer. And so therefore, if you're not in self-custody, meaning if you don't have the ownership of your private key, if you don't have the ownership of your coins, you cannot really interact uh, with your peer. Uh, this is the fundamental value of cryptocurrency as we know it today. And so therefore, self-custody is everything when it comes to uh, changing value peer-to-peer -peer or interacting with the protocol. And as you know, there are many applications that are being built now on top of the protocol layer. And if you want to interact with these applications, you need to be in self-custody and own your private keys. Does that bring different challenges when it comes to security? Do you think that this has its own side of security challenges? Yes and no. I mean, it's, it's a great question, actually. Uh, I think at Ledger, 10 years ago, we decided to go with, you know, sort of self-custody only and be the champion of this. And you're right to mention security because self-custody doesn't start without security. So your security needs to be absolute if you want to be able to be in self-custody because if someone takes away the private keys from you, then, you know, they take away uh, your money from you. Uh, but you're right to say that security is a real challenge when you're in self-custody. And right now, you know, Ledger is the pioneer and the champion of self-custody for customers and enterprise. And I think Web3 and you know, cryptocurrency in general should wake up to that reality and, 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 and security. But uh, I would say that uh, you know, Ledger is you know, definitely leading uh, and we have a few competitors. And, and Pascal, on this point as well, uh, how do you see the future uh, of custody. Obviously, we have more and more third-party custodians coming in the market, and of course, the uh, uh, offerings like yourselves when it comes to self-custody. Do you see in the future self-custody will cohabitate will, with third-party custody, custody, or you believe one will take over the other one? I think uh, you will need both. You know, in your life, you need uh, property. People have people own things, and so people will have uh, digital ownership right? Digital property. That is for sure. You will own more digital stuff tomorrow than you own today. And therefore, if you own something digital, you need to have a ledger. You need to have self-custody. You need to have somewhere to put it. That being said, uh, just like in your, in, in your life, you know, not everything is uh, your property. Not everything you own, not everything you have to protect yourself. Some of the stuff you can actually delegate to third party. Is this something that has to do as well with the regulatory environment? My question is, do you think that regulations as well impact how customers and your clients look at self-custody when it comes to crypto? Is this something influential? Might be, but actually I think it's primarily uh, for security reasons. You know, we... Uh, we our best business, our best day, best week, best best months ever, was after the collapse of FTX. Uh huh. Uh, and people and people realizing that you can't really trust anyone uh, with your value, and so it's better to trust yourself and better be in self custody. I think this is more the driver. I think when it comes to regulation, uh, we have to remember that private property is a fundamental right. And it's a fundamental democratic right. So no one should be able to take that right away from you. You should be able to own digital stuff. And when it comes to this mission, Pascal, there's obviously a big debate always between security and ease of use. Uh, what's been your approach to this dilemma? Uh, because you mentioned post-FTX, a lot of customers opted for the security, but often when customers get more comfortable, ease of use often takes over. How do you see this and how do you navigate this eternal dilemma uh, between ease of use and security? Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, security is often perceived as being like, you know, hard to use, cumbersome, and for good reason, right? Like, you know, if you make it too easy, maybe it's, it gets too easy to steal. But at Ledger, we've been working a lot on this. And uh, you, may, you may or may not know that we recently launched our uh, new product, uh, actually two new products, Flex, Ledger Flex and Ledger Stacks. 
And it's exactly an answer to that dilemma, to that question, you know, how do you make security very easy to use? And so the two things that are difficult to use when you try to use self-custody up until now is the onboarding process and the management of your private key, the management of the 24 words. Because when you set up a self-custody wallet, you end up with the wallet on one hand and a pin to activate it. And on the other hand, you end up with 24 words that is your master password, if you like. And so we solve these two issues. So it's much easier to onboard self-custody with our new product, like much, much easier. Think under 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, with Ledger Recover, we give you a very easy and very secure way to, to keep your uh, seed phrase extremely uh, secure and encrypted. Thank you so much, Pascal, for joining us today. We wish you the best of luck with everything that you do. Pascal Gautier, CEO of Ledger, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.